you're a meat eater. Um, absolutely. I mean, I actually like to name my food. I like to personally pick out the lobsters that I eat and call them all Mr. Pinchy and uh, really enjoy actually eating them. You have no, no guilt about selecting one of those no, ten lobsters see, this for thing, death. Nobody involved in this argument has actually said the primary function, which is that we eat meat because we can. It's as simple as that. And, I mean, Tom can come up with sort of his various different arguments and the butchers come up there for sort of statistical proof or whatever. We eat meat because we like to eat meat. And there is certainly, the idea of actually saying that animals have rights is completely ludicrous. We might have certain responsibilities towards animals because we're at the top of the food chain. And there's almost this sort of human guilt, it's like a PC species basis, that we're top of the food chain, we will eat things all the time. In person, and I, I actually quite like going up to, I like to lick a cow to make sure that it's ripe before I have a steak, <laughs> kind of thing, just to be able, and I don't really have a moral problem with that whatsoever. Um, and I have to say, what we're getting is a brilliant sugar-coated version of the animal rights movement tonight. And I have to say, I have to compliment you, Tom, you're doing a fantastic version, because I, mean, I know your work, and I've gone through your websites and stuff like that, and we're not seeing the extreme, and the extreme, the logical conclusion of the views that are coming through from this, you know? Mm. Um, but that, you see, there is no moral responsibility for us not to eat meat. It's, it, it, it doesn't even come within our moral framework whatsoever. Now, the thing is, when on a basic level, because we have evolved so far beyond, you don't want to basically be you know, sort of beating up some animal before you kill it. But we like meat. It's as simple as that. As a species, we like to eat meat. Kids, instinctively, will like to snack in a burger or whatever. And you can, you can bring in all the health arguments you want or whatever, but don't try and put it into some sort of philosophical thing because Nietzsche will then come around and say exactly the opposite of what you're saying. Okay, there's a lady behind there. Yes, what do you want to say? Well, I, I'm hearing a lot about evolution tonight, and after hearing the last speaker, I'm not so sure we've evolved so far, quite frankly. Um, most people, I think, you know, would cringe at the sight of an animal being treated cruelly. Uh, if their dog, for example, was treated cruelly, they would try to stop it immediately. Uh, I have visited intensive pig units. I grew up on a farm, and I know this is a cliche, but I think it's a very true. If people, uh, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, I think most people would be vegetarian, because I don't think there are many people like that who enjoy the fact that they, what they're putting into their mouth has suffered before it was actually killed, or that it has lived a, a bad life. And uh, I think we have to believe in the innate goodness of people, and we have to inform people about what's going on. And I think education is the key. Ian? That's a classic example of the horribly intellectually smug attitude that you tend to get from an awful lot of vegetarians. Answer the question. No, the thing about it is, right, I mean, you can say, for example, oh, it's not nice to actually kill an animal. But of course it's not nice to kill an animal. Nobody wants to see an animal being killed. Well, then don't that's eat like, it. No, but that's basically like saying, I mean, if I see a woman having a child, I don't, would, it's not a nice process. It's not going to stop me having sex. <laughs> this is one of those <laughs> things. God help you the know, woman. You go <laughs> <laughs> Ludicrous bunkum argument. Of course, nobody wants to see a bullet going through a cow's head or whatever. But these things happen, and it's a process that we have they to. Don't are are we prepared to accept Sorry. it? Yes, I am. As a person who's conscious, quite happy to accept that fact. And yes, I will pick out a lobster that's alive, and I will throw it into the pot. Yeah. And, and I had a beautiful fill of steak tonight, and I sat there and I was thinking, with, coming on, went, yeah. that can cow can died for a good reason because I had a bloody good meal and it was <laughs> worth it. You know? um, can, can I just ask it, Nila? Um, the, the, the question about, uh, you know, what would happen to the animal in the end? Would they all die of old age? I mean, I've often wondered why you don't see ancient uh, robins in the garden, you know, with grey feathers. And the, the reality is that well, once, yeah. they become, once they become infirm, <coughs> they are either killed by crows or eaten by foxes or whatever. That, I mean, they have, pretty, the they have a pretty have nasty death in the end. Well, well, well Pat, well. you know, I don't think you have, have to worry. Die. You don't have to worry about Donnybrook being overrun by cows or anything like that. I mean, these animals exist in large quantities because we breed them for that purpose. Yeah. And we frankly, I suppose, don't know what would happen because we never let them live their lives. No, to wh what the, I'm the saying is that if you were to allow, for example, the sheep on the mountain and they're going to die naturally, many of them would die in drains when they're too old to pick themselves up. All mm. I'm saying is that they're going to end, as we all are, one way or the other. Mm. And there is a view that says a humane, quick death in your prime is actually oh, preferable. Oh, so that's why we eat meat. <laughs> preferable. Right. No, I'm just suggesting mm. that to no, you. It's preferable we like it. to we being don't devoured. Like it, actually, it's while so that. No, if you listen to the point I'm making, it's preferable to being devoured while still half alive by one of the predators in nature. That's, that's an argument. Well, it's an argument, Pat, but I don't yeah. think it, it holds much water, frankly, because these animals, for the most part, especially uh, poultry and pigs, live completely unnatural lives in totally artificial situations. Mick, you're one of the people who's uh, yeah. accused yeah. of that. We can talk all night about blood and guts and gore and everything, I mean, which is not a pretty scene. Like, uh, I'm sure if, if somebody was taking out your appendix, it wouldn't necessarily be 
sort of make front page news. I mean, yeah, but if one you put is, a glass wall one is to around save your life. If you put a glass wall around a, an operating theatre, these things exist, these things go on. Like I said before, I mean, the animal, uh, fortunately for it, has no consciousness of impending death, uh, you know? It's done humanely. Now, luckily, we have a choice in all this. I can do as Tom does. I can eat, I, I presume, beans or uh, cabbage or lettuce, whatever, <laughs> fine, a lentil. <laughs> I don't like that stuff. Um, I would eat a certain amount of it, yes, but I would like uh, some fish, I would like some, some beef, I'd yeah. steak like I had this evening, uh, some eggs, chicken, whatever. I mean, we're extremely fortunate. Now, Tom also said, and, and, and this is where, uh, if you want a bit of uh, uh, tragedy in it, he said that two-thirds of the people on the planet don't get meat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an appalling situation. But it's a, it's a, the reason they can't get it is not by choice, unfortunately. It's because of the economic problems which we have in the world, some of which are created by perhaps uh, uh, the country that you came from yourself. Now, and I don't want to start a political argument here, but you know, we are extremely fortunate in the first world to have a choice. Uh, if you like eggs or if you like steak, if you like lettuce, by all means eat it. Now don't gorge on it, I mean balance it up so that at least um, mm -hmm. you have a little bit of everything. Okay. And that's what makes it interesting. Hi Tom. Yeah. You've heard the arguments. I've heard, I've heard an awful lot, yeah. And um, I, I think um, uh, what I've heard is uh, uh, stated several times is we eat meat because we can eat meat, we eat meat because we enjoy eating meat. But, I mean, I don't think that really addresses any moral issue. I mean, I mean just because you can do something, you enjoy do something, doesn't answer any question about whether you should do it. I mean, there, you just can't make that inference. You need an independent argument. I'm not saying you don't have an argument, just saying that's not an argument for eating meat, that I can um, the other thing is the suggestion that what I'm giving is a sugar-coated uh, version of animal rights. Uh, I'm giving my version of animal rights. I'm not giving a sugar-coated version of animal rights. I mean, there is a media conception, a popular conception of animal rights as a bunch of thugs, um, uh, lawbreakers, or, or three stooges activists running through the streets naked or throwing pies in people's faces mm -hmm. or something like that. That's not what I represent. I mean. And wh what's very important for everybody in the audience and everybody watching the show is not to think that there is just a monolithic animal rights movement that is uh, represented by the okay. media. And all due respect to the media. One last question <laughs> to you, Tom, and, and uh, before we conclude, and, and that is the, the theory now that the reason we evolved from the apes is that we developed the ability to use weapons and kill prey. And it was the extra protein provided by meat which allowed our brains to grow and allowed us to become what we are. Isn't mm. that a telling argument in favor of eating meat? You know, I don't think so, because what, it, what that would show once more is that, uh, if true, is that something happened in the past that involved our killing animals to arrive at a certain level of evolution. But it doesn't follow that because this has happened in the past, we have to continue to do it in right. the present or into the future. Tom Reagan, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you very Tom much. Reagan. <laughs> All right. Food for thought, I think you'll agree, from Professor Tom Reagan. That's all we've time for. Back on the radio Monday morning, not at 10, but at 9 on Bank Holiday Monday, back here next Friday night. Hope you enjoy the show. Good night.